So his motto is, I'll read this very quickly, is Ed Kerbening paints in oil and watercolor. His art has been recognized by many publications, including a cover story in American Artist, the largest art magazine in the United States. He's won numerous awards, particularly for his plein air work. He has participated in more than 80 exhibits. He is an, uh, an artist, he's on the artist advisory board of plein air magazine and the leading outdoor painting publication, as well as the Ventura, Buena Ventura Artists Association board member. His art is in prestigious collections, including the Forbes family, the County of San Mateo, and the Australian consulate in San Francisco. Today, he can often be found roaming either one of his hometowns of Ventura or San Francisco, sketching the people and places of these beautiful cities. Learn more about the art. I'll put this in the chat. It's www.edturpening.com. And for more information on this series, you can you can contact me, Michelle Nasco at Nasco Fine Art Hobnob. So without further ado, because I'm so excited about doing this, um, I will stop the share. There we go. And hand over to uh, Ed. Um, where are you, Ed? Here's here. this screen. Yeah. Oh, the other one. <laughs> when I start painting, that'll be the one. Okay. Well, I can. All right. I can start. I can. I can. Uh, here. It's going to do a studio tour anyway, so I'll just take this off. All right. Okay. And then I'll I'll try and find the other one. All right. Okay. You can see me. There you are. Okay. Hi everybody. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for having me today. And to and to Hi. and to. Oh, am I muted? No. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hear you. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Yeah, I can okay. Hear you. I can hear you. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for thanks BAA for for having me and thanks everybody for being here. Um, I love teaching. You know, because it's one of those things where when you when you tell some somebody something out something you know it kind of reinforces it and it makes it real again so um i hope um to learn a few new tricks here i also have a blog uh that has a lot of my painting techniques and shows and stuff like that it's uh, blog.interpreting.com if you're interested so um i guess i'll start with a studio tour just to give you an idea of of my materials and um, how i lay things out i suppose Every, I suppose everybody does it differently, right? But um, there might be some things that, that you'll, you'll be interested in. So first I'll turn this way. So that is uh, my main easel on the, on the right. And then um, I have an Apple TV here where I will project my images to paint. And oh, I, that reminds me, Michelle, does, um, is there a way to share the uh, reference photo I'm painting from today so people can see that? I would love to do that. Um, yeah, Mr. I'll, con Osborne, I'll continue. Are you? Are you? Well, yeah, let's sure. figure that out. Maybe that would be. You don't. Do you have a third device that we could I, end up with? I sent you an email with the image, um, and also sent it to Janet and um, who else? Yeah, can't, remember, can't recall. Yeah. I'll continue the the tour and, okay. and, we'll and try let to you let that. you look for it. Yeah. So um, let's see, I'll talk about my palette in a minute um, after I just give you the basic tour. Um, every studio needs a bathroom, right? <laughs> and an old still life that um, I don't know if I'll ever, re actually the, I set this up before I went on vacation last week and now it's, now it's kind of interesting. It's sort of a dead thing of flowers, but that could be cool. Um, so this is my kind of work area. I have brushes and paint and oh, I want to tell you about my paints. Um, these are some studies I'm working on that are, you know, they start with small plein air works or other studies and then I, I uh, work them up into larger pieces. Um, and I'm working on some, some new ab semi-abstracts that are um, kind of after Eugene Leroy, the French artist. I don't know if, if you guys know him, but um, very thick layers of paint, just trying to play with the texture and uh, the plasticness of paint, you know, the form of paint itself as well as, well as color and everything else. 
that's the rest of it. Lots of art books. Of course, um, we all need to be inspired. I mean, the people who inspire me right now are uh, Fred Cumming. I don't know if you guys know him. He's a landscape and figure art of ours from Great Britain. And uh, Lucien Freud, let me see, right? <laughs> I'm trying to see the, let me just turn the camera around. Can I do that? Oh, maybe not, okay. Uh, Lucien Freud, really great figurative painter. Amazing, amazing work that he does. So, um, oh, and then I have other easels for, you know, if I'm doing graphite or, or other, other mediums. Uh, watercolor. I'm not doing watercolor demo today, but um, uh, I'm still kind of learning watercolor. I've sold some and such, but I don't feel like uh, I'm ready to teach it exactly. Okay, so let me show you my, my materials. Uh, so first of all, the brand of paint I use is um, called Classic Artist Oils. And I buy them in these tubes, use this gun to uh, get the, get the, uh, to uh, disperse the oil and it's um very it's good quality and it's very cheap i mean um I, I think at one point on my blog i wrote about that the price per ounce of of this was about a third of like windsor newton or other other colors and it, you know part of it is quantity because you're using these paint guns to get the paint out put it on the palette so um so i'm sure that's how they keep the cost down and then my brushes i use mostly hog hair uh, especially with oil and sometimes I'll use a softer brush or a synthetic, um, but not generally. I really like the texture. I, I like how the, the hog hair sort of, you can grab big piles of paint or small and it's just very versatile. So prefer that. Gloves, nitrile gloves. Um, you, everybody should wear gloves if they're painting in oil. Uh, the, the, the paint can absorb into your skin, especially if you're doing stuff with uh, mineral spirits and cleaning your brushes off and that sort of thing. So I always have these on, as well as a fan uh, next to my easel as I'm working, so I don't get too, too much uh, in, terms, in terms of fumes. Um, I'll go over my palette. So, and my palette will change a little bit depending on what I'm painting, but I'll, I'll give you, this is my basic palette. So uh, titanium white, um, oftentimes, especially if I'm doing uh, plein air, it'll be a quick dry white outside so that, that it, um, it'll dry quickly. Uh, cad yellow light or a Hansa yellow. I think this is actually a Hansa yellow, but they're very close. Uh, basically a, a cool yellow or sorry, warmer yellow. The yellow ochre next to it is a warmer yellow. I mean, as a landscape painter, you just can't, or even seascapes, you or figure, <laughs> you can't live without, without yellow ochre. So um, I almost always have it on my palette. Uh, this is Hansa orange, uh, Hansa orange. And it is a fantastic color. You'll see, I'm gonna use it in this painting. It's, um, it's got, you could even do sunsets with it. It's very, it can be very bright with just a little bit of white um, or you can make beautiful greens with it. And I'm actually, for the demo today, I'm gonna to use that for some of the greens. And then a cad, cad orange here, uh, cad red light. Uh, this is fire red or I'll use a carmine or something like that. So it's a medium value red that's more blue, that has more blue in it than the uh, cad red. So it's just uh, slightly brighter. Uh, this is uh, alizarin crimson. I always use that, especially to make blacks. I'll mix alizarin, crimson, and uh, viridian to make beautiful blacks that I can bend violet one way or the other. Um, I also do have black on my palette, but that's I usually use that if, if I'm in a hurry. Like if I'm painting something and I need, really quickly, I need the complement of say blue or yellow or whatever it is, I put a little black in there and it dulls it to, to the way I want it. Uh, that's violet. I can't recall which violet I have in my palette today. I, I use different ones, but um, this is a, a kind of a red leaning violet, obviously. This is uh, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and that brighter blue underneath. Sometimes I use what's called a, a magnesium blue that Classic makes. And it, it, you can create incredibly bright blues and sky colors. Um, but it's one of those colors like phthalo blue or phthalo green where you gotta be, just, you gotta be really careful with it because it can, um, 
it can be very powerful, it can get everywhere into every color and every brush. And so you have to be careful with that one. Uh, this is Viridian green, obviously a, a blue green. Sometimes I use uh, this middle color that's not on my palette today. It's called green gold. And it's a very uh, warm green. Um, it looks like kind of a combination of yellow ochre and uh, blues and then black. Now, if I'm painting uh, figure work, I'll extend my palette here with some uh, earth tones. So uh, these range from, let's see, I've got, I think that's Indian red, um, burnt umber, uh, Venetian red, those kinds of colors. Oh, and also this uh, violet I really like. Show it to you. It's made by uh, Blocks and it's uh, Mars Violet. Makes incredible um, subtle violets for, for skin tones and things like that. Okay, I showed you my paints. Okay, the turpentine, I have in a, a bin here. I have uh, odorless mineral spirits. Um, my boards, so this is a, a board that I basically staple on whatever I'm working on. Um, so that I can have multiple things going at once, you see. So I can sort of go back and then and then put these back up on my main easel. And that's the image I'm uh, painting today. I don't know, Michelle, do you have any luck finding it? Yes, I, I just found it. Yeah. So. Oh, great. Okay. I will. How do I do? Okay. Um, is Joe here? I don't know how I that uh, would taking over. Um, does somebody know how to, is there a way? Do we, uh, at least I, I found it so right way there. Yeah, you could go to, here's one I, well, if you, um, well, there's a couple of ways to do it. You go to preferences and make it be your, your um, image in, in uh, Zoom. It's like sure. your, your sure. instead of your, uh, so that people will see it all the time. Or you could do a share screen. Okay. Well, let me do this. I'm going to, I'm going to try to get the best photo I can of it. And those of you that know how to do a screenshot, go ahead and do a screenshot at least. So you, you at least have that. Okay, so let me line this up. Whoops. Multiple people can share at the same time. So I'm doing that. Let's see if that works. Okay, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Just put it, it, are people yeah. seeing the image? Good. Great. Okay. Well, I, I wanted to show no the other. Longer, oh, I see where this is. No longer see Ed. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Got to see Ed. Although it's, I, I pressed the button that says multiple. Well, it's okay. I'm actually going to start the, the demo. Time. So you don't, you don't need my, my face on the. You could you could replace me if you want, as long as people can see this, the demo. Yeah, we can see that, but that's that's not okay. all we want to see. I, I have see. pinned Ed's demo screen. Oh, thank you. So that should stay there now, no matter who's talking. Yeah, but okay. Can you figure out how to show how to share? The other image, the one that he wants to. Okay. Should I start? You can, see my, uh, you can see my. You can see my panel. Go ahead and start. Okay. Let me let me see if I can. I'm going to try to share this thumbnail now. How do, is that taking over everything? It's I'm sharing. I'm up. sharing something. There you go. It, yep. It's the same as it was. Now, can we see Ed at the same time? Yeah, but can you see Ed also? I think you could pin me. Uh, the other folks on the uh, in the class could probably pin me, and then go back to your photo if, if they'd like. I don't know. <laughs> you know, yeah. Let's do this. We can't see, we can't I'm not I want to. I want to pin. I'd rather Art. see what he's okay. doing, Sharon? what he's working from. Is that possible? Right. Yeah. Okay. 
What are you, what are you seeing right now? Um, the eucalyptus Anybody? trees and then a bunch of little things along the side. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, I will try to stop. Wow. It's interesting how different the color is between my screen and the, what you just showed. That's, <laughs> I, it's probably my Mac. I have different devices in my studio. So, okay. So you've seen the, the uh, reference photo. Um, so the first thing I'm just going to talk through my approach in general. So the first thing I do before I started painting is I, I think about the purpose, you know, why am I painting today? Is it, I'm working on values Am I'm working on color, um, any certain skills, do I have a commission or something else? So I, I try to get in the right mindset really early in terms of why, you know, why I'm painting today and, uh oh, the host has spotlighted your video. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, a little pop up. I've got you on one screen and your pal, your your work on the other screen. Oh, so cool. yeah, that's okay. great. That works great. Right about yeah, great. Perfect. Okay. Is that what? And then what? Um, okay. Okay. Is everybody yeah. happy? You can see Ed, and you can see what he's doing. Okay, so first is getting myself in the right frame of mind. This is a demo, so I, I, I chose images, for example, that I knew would I'd be able to show different techniques and color and, and, and uh, design and that sort of thing. Um, and choosing the right medium, you know, luckily I, I, I work in a couple of different mediums. So if, if one subject is, is better suited to watercolor, then I'll use that or I'll use oil. Um, that's something I really recommend if you haven't done, if you're an oil painter strictly, or if you're strictly a watercolorist, to do as many mediums as you can to, to, to try them out. Because um, first of all, speaking for myself, I got really bored doing oil and doing 20 plein air shows a year. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, I need, I feel like this is a job now. And what's that saying? You'll never work a day in, the, in your life if you love what you do or something, love your work. So I started doing watercolor and then pen and ink and then uh, graphite. And I find it really um, rejuvenating to do that, to, to step back from a medium and get to the point where you miss it. You know, for a while I was doing so much watercolor and, and drawing that um, when I got the oils back out, you know, a few months later, it was like, oh, wow, yes, I can, I, I'm excited about it again. So, so that's really important. Um, so the palette we've talked about, let me talk about the design. So I'm gonna start putting some marks here to represent this design. When I think about design, um, first of all, to me, it's really the most important process because most of the people that see this painting are gonna see it from across the room, right? And do they come towards your painting or do they just keep going? So I, I try to make my designs very graphic, very definitive. Um, at least for this style of painting that I'm doing today. I do some other work that's less so, but uh, for this, that's what I'm doing. So I think about the space and I don't know if you guys, um, if you've heard of Edgar, um, Edgar Payne, he does, he, he wrote an incredible book, what in the twenties or the turn of the century about design. So um, it was, it's really well read and it's, it, it's taught me a lot about design actually. And of course, just visiting galleries and, and museums is another great way to learn design. Just look back at, a, at one of those paintings one day and just think about how, you know, what the shapes are in there and the big picture, not so much the brush strokes and that sort of thing, but I like to really take in the design of what I'm seeing and learn from that. Um, so for this design for, for today, uh, you know, and actually in all ways, I try to pick uh, no more than, Sorry, I gotta get another brush. I've got a problem with that one. Um, no more than three to five shapes, big shapes. Um, if you get, especially this is a nine by 12. Uh, oh, let me tell you what I'm painting on. This is a nine by 12 uh, Canton board. So it's basically a type of, uh, well, uh, uh, cardboard, but it's, it's infused with a resin so that it can take oil. And it's sold as, you know, it's artist quality uh, board. And I like them because they're cheap. So I can do lots of little studies on these and not think about 
You know, usually I pay Raymar $7.99 a panel for a nice linen panel that I would use for a commission or a show or something. And these are about a dollar a piece. So um, I like that kind of flexibility and not having to think about that. So I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna mix something close to a black, but a little bit more like a warm violet because um, there's some nice shadows in this and some oranges and ochres in this paint in this uh, reference photo. So I wish you could see my, my palette. Next time we'll have to, we'll have to do the camera over me, right, <laughs> Michelle? So you can see <laughs> actually what I'm mixing. But I'm mixing right. Elizabeth. No, I could probably... Can we spotlight that, Sharon? His 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 canvas. No, no, it's the pal. I was Sharon? talking about my palette, so people could see what I'm mixing. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. But so you're saying we don't have a go ahead. we don't have a third camera today, so. <laughs> All yeah, right. Alizarin so, Crimson. Yeah. Alizarin Crimson and Viridian. And it makes a nice violet. And I'm also using um, some solvent to, uh, to thin out the paint. And I'm using Gamblin solvent free gel. Uh, works really well, helps with drying time, uh, makes the paint uh, more fluid. Uh, especially for some colors that when they come out of the tube, they're not quite as fluid as I would like. Oh, one thing I should tell you about these, about my palette. So it's really important, I think, that, you're, that each color be the same consistency when you pick it up with a brush. So for example, cadmium reds, when they come out of the tube, they're generally really thick. So I'll mix those with linseed oil to get them the same consistency as the white, as the uh, Verdian green, as any of these colors. It's just really important that, to me at least, when you when I go down to pick up uh, some paint, it has the same feel. I don't have to dig into it like with, uh, you know, dig into it if it's too thick. Okay, so I've got some uh, drawing here, and we've got this beautiful eucalyptus. This is actually my front yard. This is a uh, Faro um, going up uh, to Grant Park. I live right behind there. Okay, so I'm gonna just do some shapes here. Keep them really big. Okay, so the tree is basically one shape. So I'll, I'll count that as one. And then there are these uh, background trees uh, they actually start about here and keep it loose. Those background trees end about here. There'll be lots of hillside brush here. Okay. And um, the hillside. I think I'll, I'll, let's see what I'll do here. Eh. Okay, I'm gonna put the hillside out here and that'll contrast nicely with these uh, limbs and branches here. Now I know there's gonna be a, a splash of light here. That's probably, in, in terms of a center of interest, it's this splash of light between the trees that I'm focusing on. And I'll get to show that light in, in two different colors. One is the hillside up here where the light is hitting and then it's also hitting some green shrubs here. So I'll be able to, um, you know, it's so important in a, in a plain air painting or, or landscape or even figure really, is to show really clearly the quality of the light, the direction of the light, the difference between, between light and shadow, um, especially light and shadow. And I, I think that's where I'm able to, you know, do a pretty good job because uh, people always, tell me that they, they say oh the light is amazing here and they they like the they feel like they've been there and that's always a great compliment isn't it when someone tells you looks at a painting of yours and says yeah I, I feel like I've been there or I want to be there <laughs> okay so got the big so you can see here not too many shapes there's a land mass there's the um, branches the trees the two different kinds of trees Let's see, I wanna make sure I keep this separate. 
Okay, these are the distant trees. There'll be some distant trees here. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna start with some color. So the darkest color, and I start with darks obviously and, and, and brighten it up as I go. It's, it's always easier to brighten a painting that's, that's starting with lights than it is uh, to go the opposite. Although sometimes I'll, I'll, do, I'll do both, kind of work both simultaneously. All right, so there's some uh, shadow on these trees here. And I'm basically using the same kind of violet uh, that I used for the for the um, drawing because, you know, it's gonna I'm gonna lighten it up. There's gonna be some more color in there, and I but I want there to be you know a nice foundation of darks for all the lights to hang off of. Okay, kind of scumbling it in. Uh, there's a light there. Okay, and then for balance, the picture doesn't show much of these other trees on this side, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make them up a bit because I want, I think it, by doing this, it'll help frame these main trees, the main eucalyptus that have the light on them in this picture. So I'm just gonna, gonna make up some stuff here. Okay. Ah, now, let's see. Um, okay, so relationships in painting is everything, right? At least in representational painting. It's really important to show immediately what the relationship is between light, and dark, and, and different colors. So what I've just did here is I put in a shadow um, for a bush, a the darkest shadow. The bush itself is also in shadow. And then I've got these greens up here. Um, that are obviously in shadow. So what I'm going to do is this, this in the picture is not nearly as dark as this. So I'm going to start by sort of working this up to a green in shadow. And, um, and then I'll, when I get the right level of green, I can see, I can make sure it relates to these two. And, and by the way, here's something on color theory. Um, these are eucalyptus trees. These are, are brushes or bushes. When I paint the light or the shadow in two different objects, even though they're both you know, greenery, I will use completely different blues and completely different oranges. And what that does is that tricks the eye into showing more of a difference in color than you would otherwise. And I know there are a lot of people that use a limited palette of say four colors and you know, black and white. And I think that's, that's a great way to learn and, and to exercise, but I know that, um, when you, when I, you'll see when I paint this, that when you use completely different base colors, it, 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 it makes them, it really helps separate them, even though they might be in the same kind of value field. So let me show you what I mean. So this is uh, the darkest darks of that bush. And now I'm gonna mix some green on top of it. So I'm taking some ultramarine blue and it's pretty dull there. So I'm gonna take some yellow ochre. Okay, mix that. I might take, I might take a little viridian, but I'm gonna see how it looks first. Okay, so there's the shadow for that tree. Oh, too dark, too blue. Oh, I, I have a color trick for you. Um, Oh, now it's way too light. Okay, I went too far. That's fun mixing live with 50 people watching. <laughs> okay, I want to t teach you a trick. So um, this is my canvas. Pretend you can see the monitor behind the canvas. That's actually right. In my line of vision, the monitor is right to the left of this canvas. So how do I get the right color? Um, I use this technique called brush in front. And the way it works is I'm gonna do it as if this camera here is my eye. I'll put this color over, I'll, I'll match this color with the object I'm trying to paint in front of me. And then I'll bring it to the canvas. And, I, and by, by having that brush on, having that paint on the brush and matching the color outside, uh, you know, the color I'm trying to represent, 
it makes it so much easier to get accurate color um, because you're, you know, you're doing a direct comparison. Now painting outside like this is difficult because I always have my canvas in shade when I'm painting outside. And then, so if I'm trying to put the brush between me and the subject, it can get um, a little tricky, um, but that's for another demo <laughs> because we're not painting outside today. Okay, let me try this. Uh, it's still way too green. Oh, there we go. I have to follow my own advice. Now I'm, I'm holding the brush in front of the monitor. There we go. Okay, that's about right. Maybe a little lighter. I wonder how this is showing on. Oh, okay. You, looks like you could you can see it pretty well on this on the screen. Well, still not quite right. Okay. Here's another tip, and this tip actually it has a tip. Okay, this is a sculpting knife. It's rubber. And if you ever want to remove paint from a canvas, um, either a canvas or a board, it, it does an amazing job. See? So I didn't want that those old colors to be there. I wanted to kind of have a fresh color on top. So I just wiped it off right here. And these come in, you know, these you find these in art stores. Uh, they come in different sizes. This one is about, oh, I'd say about an inch um, of space that I can remove. And even with these little uh, sharp tips here, um, I, can, I can remove a, a tiny amount of paint or a large amount of paint. So they're very useful. And I wish I knew the technical name for it, but the, in the sculpting section of the art store, you'll find them, all these rubber tipped uh, devices. Any sculptors on? No, okay. I keep getting this prompt to, okay, never mind. All right, so I'm gonna put that green Sometimes. in. What's that? Okay, that green's a little too. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I've worked with clay and then cast in bronze and sometimes I've worked with wood and uh, reshaped it and polyester resins, which pickle my lungs. So I love being an artist, just painting instead. Yeah. It's called a wipeout tool. Amazon um, them. It's called wipeout tool. Oh, really? Uh, I, I, I haven't heard, heard them called that. I don't know. You can get them on uh, Amazon. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, I go back and forth between Amazon and Blick online and that kind of stuff. Okay, so I wanna leave it here because now I wanna get the shadows and the light of this nearest object because this area here has to relate to this one. And once I get, once I get these two related, I'll start sort of working out from that uh, visually. Um, I used to do all the darks at once and then start bringing the lights in and, and mid-tones. But what I found was, um, you know, I wasn't able to get the colors to relate as well, because if, if you put all darks down first and then you start doing lights, how are you going to know that those darks really relate in the right way to the white, to the lights or the, you know, the lighter shade colors? So I'm uh, figuring it out too. <laughs> okay, let's do some of the tree there. That's a very... Uh, it's a dull gold. So I'm going to use um, Hansa yellow orange. And I'm going to mix a little of my um, that black that I made of glycerin crimson and viridian. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be lighter, more ochre. I'm going to add some ochre to it. Looks like it's gonna be too light. There we go. Let's try that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, maybe a little more ochre. Okay, trying to keep the brush strokes really light now. I'll go up to this one. And I can see now, so now that I've got that dark, I need to compare this dark 
to that green. And I, I think I like where it's going. You know, one of the things I, I try to do in my landscapes is even though th this is actually too blue, this bush, but I want it to separate from the tree. I don't want it, you know, I want these objects to have a life of their own and um, sort of to be like a play or a, or a dance, you know, everyone playing their part, but they're, they're not doing exactly the same thing, at least in this case. So yeah, I, um, I try to separate them more than maybe um, I, I would uh, otherwise. Now that ground, I'm actually gonna put a little ground in here because um, th that's, an also, that's also, yes. Yeah, yes. we have a thought. Um, somebody saw, uh, because some, they wanna see your reference photo without derailing you. Is it possible to turn your iPhone horizontal so that we could see you and your reference photo by chance? Uh, no, I, I tried that. It would be so small. I think you probably want as much paintings. You want to see as much of the painting, right? Is there a way to... Okay. Well, we're still working on that on another front. And I think what I'm going to do is just go on with my iPad and, um, and, sh and show it that way. So continue okay. on. I'm so sorry to have oh, disturbed no, no you. Oh, no problem. No problem. It's wonderful. Uh, right? No, I understand. You really, you do need to... Like I said, if I do this, uh, when I do this again, because <laughs> I know I'll be asked <laughs> and I appreciate it. Um, I'll get in a, a third camera overhead. Okay, so that ground, that ground is sort of a, uh, you know, it's facing the sky. So it's actually a little lighter, I think, than this, uh, this shadow area of this, of this tree. So I'm gonna mix something and try a little blot. Oh, that's way too, intense you know it's much um it's much more kind of subtle uh, now it's looking let's see and i'm gonna yeah let's see that okay that's better a little dark uh, nope too light <laughs> I was, it's so hard to get the right color. I always find myself going back and forth, back and forth, but you know, it's better to fix it now than to try to fix it later. That's for sure. It gets much harder. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. I think it's actually, I like that violet. I think it's a little more ochre. So I'm gonna do a brush in front technique to check it. Yeah, it does have more ochre in it. Yeah, get something like that. Okay. Yeah, and there'll actually be some brightness right down here that will separate this land mass from the eucalyptus tree there. So that's, uh, that's okay. And I'm gonna do this really light because at the end, you know, when I put the trunks in, I want to be able to lightly lay the trunks like this. I don't want to, I don't want the trunks to hit a pile of paint as it comes down. So we've got some here, keep that light. All right, a little bit there. And then there's that light swatch here. So this is going to be the shadow area for that light, that stream of light. Okay. And then I'm gonna need some green. So I'm gonna make a slightly different green over here. Again, to keep it interesting and yeah. Wow, it's uh, almost exactly the same value. It actually needs to be darker. So I'm gonna darken that green. Let's see. Uh, maybe a little more orange. Okay. All right. It's light. I see some green back here. So even though, you know, the, the color may not exist, I'll think, well, this green down here, do I really want it to stand alone? Is it that important? And the answer is no. So I'm going to just add it to some other spots here, areas too. I think right there, that's gonna be more land. 
This will be violet. Okay. These shifts here are really, yeah, I, I can see them on my monitor. So you should be able to see these, right? These really subtle shifts. Yeah, I can see them. It's one. It's great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so let's, now I'm going to go to, let's see. You know, I don't have enough dark green up here. I need, I need a bit more. These background trees. And I spiced them up a little bit with a little blue. Okay. Oh gosh, I made a mistake. Oh well. So those are that green. And this green actually needs to be a little bit uh, over here. Maybe a little red. It's really important to understand um, complementary colors. Um, you know, by making this a little warmer, the shadow, when I put those lights in, it's gonna, it's gonna look really good because it's, it's a really interesting gold that I've been able to get here from just using different mixtures on my palette right now. And there's some big dark ones up here, here and also here. That, there's like, like that, like this. Oh, I just love these little Dr. Seuss things at the top, you know, the little, they remind me of Dr. Seuss trees, the little things that pop up at the very top. Okay. All right. Ah, and I noticed that this, um, this shadow is looking wonky. So I'm going to actually warm it up just a bit with some, actually, let's see. I need to get this right. So I'm now, you know, picking up some uh, ultramarine blue and some um, orange to dull it and then just kind of putting in a little more loose feeling of these trees. Okay. All right, so I think the, big, the next big color here is the eucalyptus trees in light, that beautiful orange gold. So uh, I'm gonna pick up Hansa yellow orange. I think I called it Hansa yellow in my description of my palette, but it's actually Hansa yellow orange. And I'm gonna put my brush up there. Actually, that's really close, maybe a little redder. Let me try it. Now that's too light. You see that um, looks great on the palette and, and it looks great when I, when I compare it to the image, but if it doesn't fit the harmony of this, um, it's just not gonna work. It, it's the right shade. It's just, uh, it's just too dark. I mean, too light, sorry. So I'm gonna lighten it. Use my sculpting tool and get rid of that. I might use this shade for something like some highlights or something, but it's too soon to use something that dark, that light rather. All right. Uh, okay, that can actually be lit. Lighten that up a bit. I try not to use white when I'm lightening a, a shade. It just makes it chalky and uninteresting. So if I, I'm lightening something like this, I'll pick up a yellow ochre. Or if I have a, on my palette, sometimes I'll keep uh, little piles of gray from my last painting session. I'll have a, uh, a blue shade, a warm, you know, a cool shade pile. I'll have a warm sh uh, shade of reds and oranges and then a whites that makes kind of a dull white. And those are great to just pick up and they help harmonize the color. Okay, this is better because it gives me some place to go to put highlights in. Um, 
All right, like I'm gonna, I wanna see how it looks against this ground color. So there, cause there is some light right here. Yeah, I think that's gonna show up well enough. And it's the right, it's the right uh, value difference between this light and this dark. And that's what I'm looking for. This could go a little darker, but um, I'm gonna keep it here. So I've got this sort of pile right now of this gold. And you know, what we all love about eucalyptus trees is when they, and they were starting to turn here, I believe. You know, they have those beautiful red leaves and umbers and all kinds of interesting colors in there. And of course, some, some greens, even when it's turning. So I'm gonna um, start with sort of this pile that I've created to create these colors. And then I'm going to get back into that pile uh, and create a red string, a yellow string, maybe a duller string. So I'll take, I'll take that color as sort of a, the DNA for these trees in light and then I'll slightly modify them so I have something interesting because I don't want to paint all of the light the same color, obviously, but I want them to be related. And the best way for them to be related is to, is to start with them as like a base. All right, so I've got some light here. And I noticed that the lights here are pretty similar, but then the tree, it starts to get a little darker and warmer up here. So I'm gonna add a little red and let's see. Yeah, a little alizarin and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it's slightly, you see that it's just a very slight variation there. But I want, I want to, to keep the painting interesting and um, don't, want, uh, don't want, want to be look like a print. So it's got a, Got to have some life of its own. There we go. Yeah. And these darks are also looking too dark, but that's okay. I know, I knew they, they might be. And when I get towards the end of the painting, I'll actually go back into them and, and, and lighten them up a bit. Okay, this one. And I'll put a little spot of that there just again so you can see the difference. And let's see, there's a little bit more there too at the bottom. And this one's in shadow, actually a little light there. Okay. Now I want one, I want a shade of this that's greener. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna take some um, Hansa yellow orange and some cerulean this time. I'm gonna mix a little bit of that DNA color in here too, so I can pick up uh, you know, some, some kind of create a color harmony. And let's see, yeah, that's good. So there are some nice subtle greens in here too. Let's see, what's this? Okay, I'll put them there. Okay, you know, one thing I forgot to say and do is, uh, is stand back a lot. So my studio is set up so that my um, easel is at the very end of the room and I've got about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet that I can walk back. And I'll do that a lot. I mean, especially on something like a complicated portrait or something like that. I'll walk back 20 feet, sometimes even after a single stroke. Uh, because I want to see how it relates from a distance. Um, so I encourage you to do that if you, if you can. It's easy to do when you're painting plein air because, you know, unless there's a cliff behind you <laughs> or a river, um, you, can, you can step back pretty easily. Um, could be harder in, in your studio. I know I worked in really small spaces. I worked in my garage for a while. I worked in a breakfast nook. And uh, so I really appreciate the studio I have now for sure. All right, now there's also some interesting greens. Oh, oh no, I picked up by mistake a little um, magnesium blue and it is like, it's, I don't know, it's like a traffic light. So I'm gonna put some, um, add a little bit of CAD um, red to it to, to knock down that vibrancy. 
All right, so there's some greens right around here too, a little darker. Actually, oh, it's coming out pretty close to that one. Okay. I think I actually I might leave that for some sky. A little green there. Okay. And I like my paintings to be loose. So I'm, you know, as you can see, sometimes I'll just take a color and, you know, put a little spots here and there. And I can read, I can reestablish these, these uh, shadows if I need to later. Okay. All right. All right. So I think I'm going to work on the greens behind these gold trees. Um, and uh, so we got the darks in there, although I'm not sure that I got them all. So I'm going to take a second look at the darks, make sure they're right. Yeah, they're a little too blue. So I'm going to dull them up a little bit. Okay, and there's some, some of these showing through here. So that'll give a nice backdrop to the, to the uh, limbs. So I'll put some of those in there. Okay, let's see, I guess I don't want it to stop right there on the page, canvas. So I'm gonna extend that, okay. All right, now that green in, there's a little light reflecting from the sky in the eucalyptus trees in the back here. So I'm going to, um, you know, they're gonna be fairly blue, not too blue. I don't wanna, I don't wanna fight against the sky color to come. So in other words, when I get to the sky, I want it to be distinct and, and, and have its own voice in the painting and, and not relate necessarily to any of the greens too much. And I realize that it might be contrary to what a lot of you hear, right? It's like, oh, you know, you need your paintings to be, um, you know, to have the right color harmony. Uh, well, you do, but that doesn't mean using the same color everywhere. I like to really mix it up. Okay, so that's that green. Kind of in half, you know, it's just reflecting a little light from the sky. Let's see, it looks a little dark. Oh, there's that. I should have taken that manganese blue off my palette. Okay. All right, that looks okay. So I'm gonna put some of these slight lights in these background eucalyptus. Uh, there really aren't too many here, but I wanna, I want to mess up this transition here. It's a little, it was a little too firm. So, you know, just kind of blur the line a bit, put some colors in there that relate to it. Okay, and then on this side too, we'll have a little of that green. Yeah. Okay, and these are not dark enough. Okay. So I'm going to go back to those um, eucalyptus on the right. And they somehow got too light. Oh, there we go. And just have fun sort of cutting into this other color, you know, giving a stage for these beautiful golds. Okay. All right, that looks, it's coming there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a streak of light. Let me put a little more darks in there. Okay. Actually, I'll bring that over. Okay, I think I'll do the sky next. I'm going to get a completely different brush for the sky. I think it's really important to keep the sky color very clean. So I'm going to wipe some areas of my palette here and make some room for the sky color. Any questions while I do this? There were some people who were wondering what the, pa the palette. Um, so I've been adding a little bit when you 
say the names oh, oh, of the, the colors. The colors? You want to There's a blog post. So on my blog, just search for palette. Yeah. And I actually have my a bl whole blog post about my palette, the colors, um, why I use different colors, that kind of thing. So um, that should be helpful. Blog. What's the address of your blog post? Blog. Well, the blog is, is blog.edturpening.com. And um, I, there's a search box. If you just search for palette um, or classic artist oils, that's the brand I use, you'll prop, you'll find it. It'll be there. Maybe if somebody looks for it now during the demo, they could just post it in the chat. Um, okay, sky color. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the sky. You know, too, too, all too often landscape painters will make the sky too dark. I mean, too light, actually. <laughs> and there are some clouds. Like if I look at the reference photo, there are some clouds here, which makes it lighter. There's one little cloud up here, which I haven't decided whether I'm going to include or not. But um, point is, don't be, don't be afraid to make your skies dark. I, I try to make them as dark as I can get away with, because when I do that, these lights are going to just uh, glow even more. Um, okay, so, but obviously I can't make the sky, um, uh, you know, the, the sky has to be lighter than, than those lights on the trees. Okay, so I'm going to, so I, what I'm seeing here now, it's kind of a bluish green sky. It's not, definitely not ultramarine, not that, you know, that cobalt see, that you see in the Sierras in, in high altitudes, you know, this is sort of a beach, um, color and the, actually very similar to the color that I see in San Francisco, that kind of uh, same kind of thing. So I'm going to start with Cerulean. And okay, so try to avoid that manganese blue again. That was toxic. And mix some white. All right. Now just plain white and blue. You know, it, it's very, it can be, it's very intense. And I don't really know that I want the sky in this picture to be that intense because I want I want the focus to be on the lights and the tree and on the land here. So I'll try a bit just to get an idea. Yeah, that's really bright. Hmm. That's bright. You know, I'm going to add a little a tiny bit of cad red in here. Tiny bit. Okay, this is like really bright. You know, if I was painting something, a, a different scene where I want the sky to be the, the star, then I would use that, but that's better. I think I can still go a little duller. So white, uh, cerulean blue, and a tiny bit of cad red light, cad red light. Okay. Okay, that's better. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see the difference here. <laughs> um, I, I, it's, um, yeah, it's, it might be hard to see depending on your, your monitor. So I'm going to start with all the. What's that? Subtleties are there. The subtleties. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Got you. Thank you. Good. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of work my way around these trees. Now, the light in the sky has two directions um, of value. So one is, so first of all, the, the top of the sky is darker. Now, this is such a crop, this is such an immediate photo that you really don't see the horizon and, you know, the top of the sky. So there won't be much difference in value between the top and the bottom areas of the sky. Not much. There's also a direction of the light, though. So as you can see from the, um, the, light, the areas here that we're going to be in light in these, um, the light is coming from this direction. So the sky will also be lighter on this side of the canvas than it is on this side. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, you, you can paint the sky all one color, that's fine. But I think what, what I tend to do is I try to show the subtleties of where the light is coming from and uh, where the horizon is. So. That's what I'll show you. Now I'm noticing as it gets closer to uh, the darker area of the sky, 
it um oh yeah there's a cloud there so that's hard to sometimes it's that's gonna be hard to kind of judge the blue but also to make the painting interesting i'm just going to do a little ultramarine and white and again a little cad red light just to dull it a bit yeah okay so that that'll help me show the direction of this of the sky and and show that there's you know the sky isn't just one thing and then i'll kind of just mix them together here a little bit I need a little more medium. Okay. All right, unfortunately, I picked up a little gold there. There we go, got rid of it. Okay. I'm just coming up to the edge because I want to look at the relationship of these colors. So let's see. Yeah. I'll need a smaller brush. Hmm. All right. Now there isn't actually in the photo, there is not a gap between these two areas, but I kind of, I, I want to do that because I want this, uh, to, I want to, you know, the, someone told me once when you paint a tree, it should look like, you know, a bird could fly through it. You know, it's got to have holes. It's got to have uh, a lightness to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of that blue there. Okay, now as I get lower, especially for these tree holes, um, the colors will be um, much darker because the light is blocked by the little tree leaves and everything else going on there. Okay, I want to make this a little more obscure on the edges. Okay. All right, I'm going to put a, a few more sky holes in. So I'm going to mix some ultramarine blue, white, little um, cad red light. And this is much darker than. Um, the sky colors, but they're not going to look much darker. Well, that's actually too dark. Keep going it up until I get it. That's better. Yeah, okay. That's pretty good. Maybe a little more light white. Take a look at the reference photo. Does everybody see that that I put up? Or is it just me? Yeah, I, I got I see it. It's up, it's up but now uh, but now not with all. Ed, yeah. yeah, so I want to see if I can, I don't know, as I can reverse both up at the same time. It just doesn't seem to be. Well, the way you were doing it before was working really well. Yeah, but I'm sharing screen this time and, and that's a different Sharon? thing. Sharon? Yeah. If you, if you put your cursor on the right side of the source image, you'll see a line that goes vertical. Right side of what image? Of the trees, the, the the photograph. Okay. There's you see, a. You see a line that goes vertical, and your cursor turns into a double arrow. No. Oh, because oh. because I can grab that and move it to the right, and that way it it equalizes the two screens. That happen for everybody? Because I don't have one of those. Oh. I like just watching him paint. <laughs> yes, I agree. So I'm going to stop sharing, but just to refresh everybody's memory, oh, this is oh. what he's painting from. Well, there Thank we you. go. Second, hold on. Oh. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You know, I you can actually move that line, what she was trying to say. You could put that in and then you can move the line between them, either to the left or right, and everybody can make the references big or little as they want. Right. That's what I was trying to explain. Thank you. You want to put it back up? Want me to put right, the right. reference photo back up? Yeah, put it back. Wait. 
just the way you just did it to share both of them at the same time. Okay, so I'm sharing again. And I don't see what you're talking okay. about because, but that no. must be because I'm the one sharing. So right. let me. Yeah, so yeah, it looks great, Ed. That looks so cool. So if people look right between the two images, there is a double vertical line. Put your cursor on it and move it to the left or right. And you'll see that the size of your images will shift. One will be bigger and one will be smaller, depending on how far over you slide that vertical bar. I just have the reference photo. I'm not able to get the split, split okay, screen so like I usually do in Zoom class in my college classes. Oh, you don't have the other, you don't have the one that he's painting on? It's the right, it's at the right of the white, not the right of the actual image itself, but the white surrounding the image. It's right on the edge of that. No. Correct. Now, at right between those two, yeah. take, there is a, there are two tiny vertical lines. Put your cursor on it and slide it to the left. Way to so the right of the white. Do you have an idea white. for us? Yes, that works. That works. Further to the right from her, like where her cursor is, move it all the way to the right of the white. Right of the white. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to, you'll have to slide left and right. Right there. Try it, you know, and get over the, to the right to... quarter of an inch. I'm on my iPad. Maybe it doesn't work on that. It always worked on my computer. I know what you mean. Should, should I continue? Well, I'm painting seeing the oh, yeah. keep, keep painting. <laughs> okay. I'm seeing the reference photo of a still large image and the demo as a small image, as a live demo, and you know, in the top right. Correct. Right. Well, ideally, I would. So I would want to get a little make it bigger. It's okay. The view you have to have your view as side by side speaker. You know, in the upper right hand side, you'll see a little button that says view. Click that and make it side by side speaker. Hello. Did you do that? Does that bring up both images for you? Okay, so it, I think that this is too much to worry about. So Sharon, why don't you take off the reference photo and every, every so often put it back up. How's that? Okay. Yeah. Very good. That works. Okay. Terrific. Thank you though. Nice to be able to see it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to see if I can. Um, I'm going to put the reference photo in the chat. Yeah. If I can. Okay. So um, I don't see my me on the screen yet, but I'll just keep painting. Maybe you guys have me pinned or something. I don't see it either. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. It doesn't matter. What we want to see is Ed paint the what he's, he's gone. Painting. My screen's right telling now, me. Oh, there he is. He's back. Painting. Okay, and in the chat, you're going to see a, a thumbnail of the uh, Ventura Eucalyptus. How brilliant. That he's painting them. And those of you who want, you can go ahead and put it up there. All right, uh, there I am. Okay, so now I'm working on the ground cover right here. And, um, you know, the reference photo, the ground color is very, very similar to this color. And, but I don't want to paint it that way. I want it, again, I want to make it um, interesting and, and, um, and just, you know, stand out a little differently. So I've mixed this sort of reddish version of this 
And I put a little up here just to give you an idea of how it looks different. And I'll probably use some of this actually in these trees later. But I wanna start with that ground cover and I wanna make sure it looks right against this violet. So I'm gonna put it right against there and keep mixing until I get the right color. All right. That looks pretty good. It relates well to the trees, R relates pretty well to these shadows. Although I think the shadows still might be a little too dark, but that's what we'll figure it out. I'm gonna put a little streak of light here just to, yeah, there we go. I think that's the right color. So what I mixed was um, Hansa yellow orange, cad red, ochre, and as little white as possible. I don't wanna dull the color. And I want this little break here to kind of show maybe a little hill or something, rock. What? What did you get, please? I got, how dare you? Um, okay. I cannot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not going to the very edge of these because I might want to, I might have some fun with those edges. So, um, all right, looks like I've got most of the canvas covered. Let's see, I might want to put some darks back here. I don't know that I have enough. A violet even could be. No, no. All right, just like these streaks here. So at this phase, you know, it's very blocky what I'm doing because I'm just I'm just doing color spots that relate well to each other. Um, almost like doing a painting it as a study first, and then sort of evolving it. All right, make sure I have enough of these darks here. Yeah. Mix it up a little bit. Ed, we have a question in the chat. What yeah. pigments what pigments were used to achieve that beautiful salmon pink? Oh, uh, this this pink. This is a uh, cad red light, Hansa yellow orange, and ochre with a little white. Now, these um, Dr. Seuss areas up here that kind of float above the tree, they're looking really dark and they're distracting from the rest of this. So I'm gonna just get in here with a, a brush with no paint on it and just sort of make it more subtle. You know, not so much a difference between light and dark, maybe get a little of the sky color in there. because they're just sticking out too much, I think. And they're, and they're kind of behind this tree anyway, so they're kind of a, a little bit more distant. Yeah, that's still too dark. So I'm gonna work some other colors in, maybe some, I'm gonna work in a little, um, let's see, I think cerulean blue, a uh, little red, Let's see what that does. Yeah, that kind of grays it nicely. Yeah, make these a little more organic. Yeah, okay. They still have light on them, so I'm gonna go back and put a little bit of light on. Okay. Hi, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Oh, great. This is Lisa Mahoney. Hey, um, the light is hitting this, the upper right oh. section where you're painting. Oh, I see. How's oh, that? thank you. Yeah. Nice. You know, I didn't, I didn't talk thank about you. light. I yeah. should, though. Um, that would be good. Yeah. So this studio light is a, um, it's called a daylight light. It's, it, but it is, it is meant for painting in a studio. 
And it's also dimmable. So let me show you something about it. Um, so it's got three modes. So that's the brightest mode. And I find if I have it on that bright mode, when I get the piece in a gallery, you know, they're not going to have as, as much light typically in a gallery. They're going to have the second one down typically, which is this. And then there's, there's a third that goes even lighter. So maybe I'll just put that on now. Um, so yeah, lighting uh, for, for your, to, to light, lighting your painting surface is pretty important. I know in the old days before we had LEDs, people would mix, you know, they'd have a mix of fluorescent and incandescent to try to get that balance between light, uh, between warm and cool colors. Uh, but today we, you know, we've got these lights that you can order in any or, or even change live the, uh, the uh, color and intensity of the light. So we're lucky we've got some good lighting. What's the name of that? Uh, let's see. What's the name of that? Yeah, I'm looking. Um, I think it might be an ot light. Uh, I don't see the name on it. Oh, what wait. Ott, O-T-T. I think it's an ot light. I'm not okay. sure. Great. Uh, after the demo, well, it, will there be a way to, to answer questions in a follow up uh, through email or whatever? Uh, Absolutely. Michelle. Sure. Okay. So if, if, if I get a list of questions, yeah. Um, yeah, we, you can go ahead and email them to me, I guess, or whoever, and I'll look that up for you, make sure I get you the right brand. Sure. Okay. So, boy, that really changes my life. <laughs> you know, to have the light so low now. Um, it actually looks much brighter on the yeah. Zoom screen. Um, actually, in my studio, it's pretty light, uh, but that's okay. That's good. I like to be challenged. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna brighten up some of these areas, make them more interesting. Actually, that's too light. I'll put your email in the chat. Okay. Or you can reach me uh, from my blog at turpening.com, my website. Oh, okay, we'll do it that way. That way oh, everybody can share and see what you answer. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. And uh, oh, I only got 20 minutes left. Okay. So I'm going to lighten these up a bit more. Because now I'm seeing in this lighter gallery light that they're these lights are not quite where I want them. So I added, um, I mixed a little uh, Hansa yellow orange, yellow ochre, and a little bit of white, not too much. Also, I want these more tree-like now, less blocky. So I'm gonna you know, start adding those areas that are more subtle. All right, I feel like I need to put some branches in here and some trunks, some tree trunks. All right, so I'm gonna use a, um, so the, the brushes I was just using before, I think you saw them on camera. So they were Filberts or Brights. Um, this is a, 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 a not a, it's, it's a, not a, not a Bright. What's the other one that's square and long? Anyway. It, and it's a number one, I think. Yeah, it's a number one. Utrecht. They sell them on the list. Black. Thank you. I think that was Brian. Thank you. Do you spell that? Yeah. Utrecht. Utrecht makes really great brushes. I I think I almost only use Utrecht. You get them at Dick Blick, places like that. All right. So these branches. Now these the branches are interesting because some of them are in, are in shadow. Some are in light, but the change, the difference in value between the two is really subtle, very subtle. Ah, so, hmm. Okay, I'm going to mix two different colors for those. And, um, you know, it's a very kind of, again, a yellowish color. Um, matches that. Uh, that ground color I, I just put in, a lot of that in it, some red. But the shadow side is, uh, 
is, is, is a bluer, bluer, duller shade. So I'm actually gonna start with the shadow side. So let's see how this looks. So there are, let's look, like this branch is in shadow right here. Okay. So that's one in shadow. Now I'm gonna mix the one in light to um, compare them. And one, one thing you'll learn in, um, oh, is it not Edgar Payne's book? There's another great book on uh, landscape painting uh, that talks about, oh, it, maybe it is Edgar Payne. Actually it is that, uh, the surfaces that are flat versus vertical versus, you know, they all have different um, value and light characteristics. So um, these tree limb, these trunks will actually get the most light of just about anything in this picture because they're standing up and the light is going, because it's a light afternoon light, the light is going, is hitting it directly, right? As opposed to this land, which is more at an angle. So there's light, it's not as bright. So that's what I, those are the things I think about when I, you know, putting these, these lights in, because this, this tree limb has to be distinct from this light here. And actually looking at it, it's kind of, kind of blue, which, you know, those of us who live near eucalyptus trees know those, those uh, branches and, and trunks are just so colorful and interesting. And they actually do kind of lean, I would say more of a cooler color than a typical tree trunk, like a, a pine or something. So let's see, I'm gonna try this color. Okay, yeah, that works. And then the tree is gonna kind of just turn a bit there. All right. I love doing tree trunks. I mean, you know, I just drag the brush down um, from top to bottom. And just let it uh, let it go. Don't try to control it too much, because it is a tree trunk. I mean, it's it's uh, no one's going to know if it's slightly different than what you, how you've painted it. All right. I also did a little pile of a reddish version of these colors because I want to try that. And and also the colors closest to the light here on the on this part. Sorry, this part of the painting are actually getting a lot of light. So I you know, a little bit red, so I'm gonna try that. Yeah, that looks pretty good, okay. All right, now some of these areas are too light, so I know I'm gonna to have to go back and adjust them. That's okay. I mean, that's what painting is. It's making constant adjustments. No one gets it right the first time. Um, so it's always about, okay. Looking at something with a, a fresh pair of eyes each time, you know? Okay. All right, let's see. Now I wanna, I wanna hide some of these tree limbs, make them look, yeah? While, yeah. you're, while you're doing that, I'm going to interrupt just for a moment and give away, I, I want to give away a pad of paper. It's a, um, just a sketch pad, but, um, and then after you're done, we will do a spin to win for uh, the painting that you're talking about. Um, so let me do that while you, you continue. I don't want to stop you, but um, I have okay. everybody's name on this spin to win and um I hope I can, I'm going to just share so people can see it. And it's just a silly thing because I'm kind of silly. And uh, there we go. Can everybody see the spin to win? Anybody? Sharon? Yeah, I see I, it. I see it. Yes. Let me go ahead and do it. Again. Yes. See it. Okay. We're yes. spinning. There oh, cool. Is. And the big winner of this is... Lynn Cooper. Okay. And uh, since it went so well once, I think I'll give away two of them. One more time. I think everybody's on here pretty much. 
And I know Janet, uh, Janet, would you like to, to, to keep this? Remember last time hey, you didn't Jan want to be on here, and I'm sorry I put your name on. Yeah, she she's um I know she said before she didn't want to be on here. So I'm gonna remove her and do it one more time. And if she does want it, I'll just give her a pad too. One Left more time. The We're demo and yes, yeah, she doesn't want to be on it. Right. So Judy, Judy Tossing, are you um are you here? I am here. You have to be here to win. Are you I'm here? here. Okay, then you want a, a, a pad of paper. Do you live, uh, I should qualify this. If you live in the Ventura area, we're not gonna mail them somewhere. So where, where do you live? I live in Oxnard. Judy? I live in Oxnard. Okay, not too far. This, that's great. Oxnard I don't see my name on there. To be able to say, come to the, I'm not sure, oh, Lisa, you're on there. I yeah, you on there. yeah, it's, I can tell, I can tell you're, Really? I I yeah. can't find my own name so, anymore. If you if I put it on before. Anyway, um gosh, you could be right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if if you're, if you're one of the winners, then uh you can pick up your there are two winners. I hope that um Sharon got those names. It's uh Judy Tossig and the first one was who was that? Lynn Cooper. Okay, I'm going to stop, stop sharing here. I'm Judy, put, Judy okay, is a good. member of BAA, names, so, so I can... Good. I was saying, Judy is a member of BAA, so I can track her down. Lynn, if you have an email address that you can put in the chat, that would be great. And we'll have these sketch pads at Harbor Village Gallery and Gifts for you guys to pick up when during open hours. Terrific. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. and, and Lisa Mahoney, you are now on the wheel for um, for the big win of the night, which could potentially be a painting by Ed Turpening. So thank you. I'm going to stop the chair and go back to the story. Here. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now I'm. Um, Thanks for your Lynn's in I, Texas. Thank you, Lynn, for the donation, for the donation back. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. All Go right. on. I'm sorry, Ed. Continues. Sure. Yeah. Um, so now I'm. I want this. Uh, I want this area to be more interesting because it. It is. You know what I want the eye to do, is to probably start here all the trees around and kind of this little bit of a circular kind of uh, composition. So I put, a, I put some finer uh, shadows in here. In fact, there are because these trees, of course, are casting a shadow. So it makes it real. Um, but I want to really, I want to brighten that land up a little bit more in light, just give it a little more character. So I'm gonna mix a color a very similar um, value to the previous one, but it's going to tend red. Okay, that's so subtle, <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> so I'm going to brighten that up a bit more. Uh, it's still. Okay, maybe. Yeah, little, that's very subtle. It's going to go a little redder. There we go. I think that's about it. Okay. Just to give this area a little more character, just putting little spots of, you know, this color in, breaking up the shadows a little bit more so it's not, and then actually in some places strengthening them. So I just strengthen that shadow because I really want this line to be here to sort of curve around the painting. So give the eye some place to go. What else? Okay. So let's see. It's funny now since I've turned the light down on my on this, it's looking really dark. So I'm gonna 
I know looking at, I'm looking at my screen on Zoom and I can see it's brighter than I have. But um, I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. Let's see. Yeah. These trees here need to lean a little more form to them. A little lighter, a little greener. Yeah. So that they look like different trees. They're not the same exact tree as the main center of interest. So kind of play with these a little bit. Okay. What else does this need? I think the I think that actually the light on the trees could be even brighter, especially as maybe like a a highlight kind of thing. So I'm going to take white and Hansa yellow. And actually, I'll put that on just to show you how bright, you know, Hansa yellow can get with white. It's really, yeah, see? So actually, that reads pretty well. And I don't want to overuse it. You know, I just want to put some, some select highlights in. It's really easy when you, when you find something that works to sort of just put it everywhere. <laughs> Um, and actually, I'm put a little of that on the ground too. There's some leaves on the, you know, below the trees here anyway, and kind of bring it together nicely. Let's see. That really changed it. it looks great. Oh, thanks. And then up here too. This is pretty bright up here. Leave those alone. Hmm. Yeah, feeling like I might be doing too much. Well, there's a little bit, a little bit there. Okay, now these, some of these darks are looking too dark. So I'm kind of reevaluating, especially the darks here in the trees. So I'm gonna adjust them. I'm gonna take some um, ultramarine blue and some cad red light, more ultramarine. And then so to warm this up a little more CAD. Okay, because I want to keep, create this sort of dull. Yeah, it's way too dark. I'm gonna add some uh, yellow ochre to what I just showed, what I just put on the canvas. Yeah, that's better. So this is slightly um, lighter. I think some of the darks in the tree was, were looking like, uh, like holes in the, holes in the trees. I mean, not holes, but like, yeah, like black holes. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Can I make an observation about the tree in the back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there are two um, windows into the sky that almost look like eyes to me. Oh, I'm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I was gonna, I'm gonna adjust the sky holes next because that's, I usually do that at the, okay. the end. Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I keep looking at that, thank you. Okay, and I feel you like this dab? is- uh, Who? You ever dab with a cloth or a paper towel or anything or only a brush? Uh, no, no, not too much. I'll, I'll brush over an area before I'll dab it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So I want to. I do want to work on the sky. I'm glad you brought it up because there's some areas ah, that you know I might have dulled it too much. I mean, this is an end of day picture, so you know uh, the sky should be luminous. So I'm going to mix some white some cerulean blue and a tiny bit of cad red let's see okay that's more luminous lighter i think that'll work and i you know because i already have some color down there i'm just i want to i want sort of a mixture i want the eye to see different colors like a you know a, a warm blue next to a cool blue next to a dull blue i mean that's really important to get the kind of vibrancy you want in the color is that you have um, placed, 
you have colors placed next to each other that uh, vibrate, if you will. And that, that can be things like complementary colors. Um, it can be, you know, um, well, generally complementary, I guess. Oh, and also just, just varying things like, uh, like uh, intensity of the color. So now I want to keep that violetish blue, but I think that's a little dark. So I'm going to go to, into cobalt blue and just co pure cobalt blue and white. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's good. So you see the difference there, especially there where I put it on the on the line here of these other trees. Okay. Yeah, that really wakes it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, and then I, you know, another thing too is I, I try to make my sky strokes this way, vertical. Um, you know, when a, when a painting is, is shown, right, the light comes from the top. And so if you paint it this way, it's going to catch more light from the, the light above it. As opposed to if you paint it this way, you know, the light, um, it just doesn't, it, it's not as intense. So I, I think about the, the direction of the strokes too. Okay, and I think, uh, let's see. I need to look at that reference photo more. I always try to look at whatever I'm painting more than the surface of the painting. You know what I mean? Because it's it's so easy to um, sort of forget what it is you're painting and just get involved just in just in the surface. Although eventually I will make that transition. I'll say, okay, I don't care what the reference photo says. Um, this needs to be a nice painting. So what do I need to do? How can I improve nature? <laughs> it's often the question I ask myself. And I think to be congruous, a little bit over here. Congruent, there we go. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, that's nearing, nearing completion. Why don't I just take questions? How much time do we have? Oh, yeah, I have three minutes left. Perfect timing. So um, what questions do you have? And I'll answer any questions through email too, but. You can go over if you want, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering what, hi, it's Lisa Mahoney again. Um, hi. I'm just wondering what is going on with that back section of your, your trees? Cause you've got so many heights. Uh, sky holes in there now that I'm wondering is that yeah it's just kind of tricking my brain a little bit so those uh, yeah yeah you see this is actually a, there's a roadway right here okay so the sky you know how you know what um I can I can fix that that's a good question because it'll lead me to so you know there's there's actually a roadway and I don't want the I want the roadway not to be a a center of interest, of course, but just a way to lead the eye. So we'll put it like that. And then I should really put maybe some ground or some other color up here to separate it from these greens. So, so that yeah. I can highlight, highlight the road, roadway more. So I'm gonna start with this. Uh, yeah, it's a little too, let's see. I need to make sure it, it's in with the eye with the color story of the rest of the painting, of course, too. Yeah, you know, I, this is the type of situation where I just might take out take it out of the roadway and just. Um, well, actually, it's kind of reading well. I, th I think it's I think it's coming along. It's yeah, it's looking good yeah. now. And I'll 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 continue it over there. Okay, and actually, to also to reinforce that it's a roadway, I should have put these tree limbs in. So I'm gonna do that for the back trees. And I didn't get to that, kind of forgot it. So I'm just grabbing some, a little dark pile of paint on my palette. I'm gonna, I wanna cut through some of the sky holes, of course, to show that it's a, tr a trunk. 
but not evenly. You know, there's it's about a, I went about a third of the, of the sky hole. I didn't do it right in the middle. You never want to do something right in the middle like that. That first tree trunk just made sense. So yeah, now, yeah. Now, now I can, know now I yeah, can tell what's going see. on. Uh, yeah, I got you. This is fun. This is a great way to. It's almost like a live critique. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? You're yeah, Ed, I have a question pertaining oh, to the really trunk coming down, and I missed um, part of it where it broke up. But do you only put the highlighting down, or do you add dark also? No, I, it's such a narrow tree trunk. I did not put a dark behind it. And there's enough dark. I mean, like the edge of the trunk, right? Where it's it's folding, the light is behind it. I didn't put that line in, but I knew that these were going to be in shadow and so and the trunk would be a light. So I knew it would be framed by that those darks. What I did do, I think I talked, I talked about that. You might've missed that is that some of the trunks are in light and there are some of them that are uh, sort of in a reflected shadow. So I did do two, two color values for the trunk. So you can see it right here and, and a bit right here. So that to, to show that some of the trunks are in uh, shadow. And um, actually I'm gonna put, mm -hmm. eh, no, never mind. I can, <laughs> one of the nice things about having a studio is I can just put this, this aside, come back in a few days, work on some other things, and then say, oh, what does this painting need? I'm not sure. Any other questions? Okay. Well, um, I'm probably okay. going to, I'm going to review this, this tape. I'm going to review the uh, video because I'll want to write down. I, I'm really grateful. You generally pretty much did say the names of the paints as you were using them. So yeah, that was great. That was really good, helpful in the pictures and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still so having a has been that first okay, so little I'm white gonna... trunk that kind of goes off in an angle. It just seems too skinny to me. But what can I say? <laughs> uh which one this one i don't know you can yourself she's she's talking about the four shat short four shortened one it's oh it's beautiful. you know I, i'm sure it's the way i forgot to put reference. these greens in so some of the greens are in white oh. right there so I'll, i'm sorry i'm just uh realizing that i want some of those in not too dark. Okay, and then over here, we'll say there's a little bit, maybe a, some stripes of light in this green too. Give it the, to move the eye the, the way that I want it to move. But these are also natural marks, right? You wouldn't be surprised to see maybe some dappled light in here. Okay, that's <laughs> it's thought. <laughs> I have to make dinner. <laughs> uh, it looks if great. Anybody Ed. has been Thank you, Ed. Along. Thank you. Hey, it was my Sharon, stop. Sharon here. Stop. If, if anyone Thank has you, Ed. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm, stop I'm everybody. Do we're doing if, everybody. If we're anyone doing has the been drawing for Ed's along. painting. Yeah, if anyone has been painting along and you want to show us what you've been doing, um, please speak up and, you know, show your painting to your camera and let's see what wait you Wait a got. second. Sharon. Sharon. Sharon, can you hear me? Sharon. Yes. Okay. Wait. We're doing a drawing for Ed's painting. Okay. He, he said that he would donate a painting. I think that this is like paramount right now before everybody leaves and or starts showing their paintings so all right um let's do can we that do first. that now absolutely ed sure okay okay i'm gonna i'm gonna share i know it's it i mean i think it's wonderful that you're and and explain what you wanted to, to donate oh yeah um, so would, ed. Wh whoever wins the the raffle 
Um, I'm going to ask you what genre of painting you like, watercolor, oil, figure, landscape, seascape, cityscape, whatever. Let me know, and then I'll, I'll pick out a few things that, I, that I'll give to you, and I'll share them in email, and you can decide which one you want. Sounds wonderful. Or the demo. If that you is just so want amazingly the, generous. If you want Thank the demo, you. that's that's uh, yeah. that's up too. The demo. The demo. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Here comes the screen. <sighs> okay. Everybody is everybody ready? Anyone yeah. who's not on here, if you don't see your name, let me know right now. Okay. Unless you already won something. Here we go. Oh my gosh, it, it's not, oh, Janet C. Now is this a different Janet, Janet C. Who is Janet C? I don't know her. Can you, can you speak up? I'm here. <laughs> if Janet C isn't here. I am here. Can you wave Hello. your arms? Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay, very good. And where Wait, where are you located? <laughs> where, where? Yeah, where are you located? Oh, San Gabriel Valley. Where, I could use a where, trip to the beach. <laughs> okay, well, okay, very good. Can you put your contact in the info in the chat? I will do that. Us? You want my email or more information, or what would you very like? Both. Right, let's let's go with the phone and the email. Okay, and, we'll uh, do. From that point on, we can figure it out. And uh, okay, so and Janet, if you sharing. do want to, if you do want to stop by my studio and look through things and pick something out, you're, I'm happy to to host you here. I would love to do that. <laughs> I I live in uh, Ventura, right right above the uh, Ventura Mission downtown. I could use an outing. I'm really getting tired of being home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it to San Diego, but going north would be nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm all vaccinated, and we have beach oh, me weather too. here, so it's nice and cool. <laughs> <laughs> so just one me. last. Oh, so sorry. now we can start. I just had one last question. What time of day do you think that is? Like late afternoon, you're painting. Oh yeah, late afternoon, probably around good. five o'clock. Okay, well, good. The time time of year, but yeah, golden light. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for asking your questions. That was wonderful. So, well, thanks everybody. Is there somebody who'd like to share their painting? I know there were a few people who were painting along. Anyone? Here. Mine, it's not very pretty, oh, but I did it. Oh, there you are. Oh, oh, Let's man. see what you did. Oh, not nice. That's oh, gorgeous. Oh. How dare you? That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I mean, it's a Tell false us where you're from. So I'm from Virginia. And, and where uh, are you from? I'm from Virginia, and I live on the Chesapeake Bay in a little town called Pocosin. Um, and I just started painting four months ago. Wow. Very <laughs> nice. COVID fun. Uh, how did you learn about the demo? Uh, I did plein air live. And um, eventually found the plein air on Facebook and saw your demo for tonight and wanted to oh, do it. Great, great. Glad you oh. found it. That looks great. Thank you. That is uh, your quick study. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of fun. Well, it's been a good mental sanity break from my real job, so I've really enjoyed it. Oh. What's your Thank real job? You. I think. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm a financial advisor in real life. Oh. You have a strong <laughs> right side. Who knew I could do money and you. money? Who knew? Hey, you help us re retire. You help us I figure out how to. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Ed. Fabulous. You are wonderful, Ed. I really appreciate you doing this tonight. Oh, I'm happy to. It was fun. It was fun. I felt like a little bit like uh, uh, you know, Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair looks better. Hey, better than Bob. Oh, Bob thanks. Ross. <laughs> you have a question in the chat. Demo. Hmm? 
Bell, there's a question. I, um, Lynn says she's interested in the sky colors and mm -hmm. how the light in the light source influences it. Could you talk more about that? Um, yeah, the sky color, you know, it's a combination of, well, it's atmosphere, right? So in certain places where there's a lot of um, humidity in the air, like this is Ventura. So we're this, where this was taken is about four blocks from the beach. Um, it, it tends to, you know, alter the color, I think a little greener. Also when you're near the coast, I think the sky tends to look a little greener. Um, and the Sierras, you know, places I love painting, like I was just in Palm Springs. I actually didn't paint because it was 106 degrees. <laughs> so I, I sat by the pool and did some watercolors. Um, I didn't go out like I wanted to, <laughs> but the, the sky there is, is, uh, is, is pretty intense. And I think the most intense sky, the sky I love painting is, is the Sierras, Lake Tahoe, um, or even, even in Ojai, you know, looking out, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, more towards the horizon, uh, uh, and, I mean, above the horizon to the, to the zenix of the sky. You got some really beautiful dark blues, like ultramarine blues. But um, yeah, ultimately, I kind of use the sky as a tool. So the, the, the center of interest of my painting wasn't the sky, it was the tree. So I wanted to pick colors for the sky that better sh highlight the tree. So. The sky in this in this is actually um, yeah, no, actually it's it's a little redder in the in the uh, reference photo, but I don't know. I felt like I, I had to feel that green that the sky the blue green of the sky kind of work with the rest of the painting and, and make a nice color harmony. Um, so I don't know if that helps. Does that make sense? <laughs> I guess the answer is it depends. You know, it depends where you are and the, it depends what you want to show in the painting. Um, or if you're just learning and you want to do the sky really accurately, you know, that brush in front technique where you put the brush between you and the, and the object you're painting so you can just get the right color. I, I do that a lot, especially in plein air. It's harder to do in the studio just because of the lighting here and the way everything is set up. But Great answer. That was, that was a neat technique too. I like that. I've not done that that way. I always thought that the paint Kind of shifted color a little bit when it dries but i guess not so much that you would and, and the whole thing is wet so it'll all be relative anyway right well um oil do you think oil doesn't shift, shift yeah acrylic shifts uh watercolor shifts yeah. um oil is is pretty it dries pretty true to when you lay it down so i don't i don't take that into account when i'm painting because i know that it's um it's more stable Terrific. Thank you so much. Well, sure. with that, I, I th think that I'm going to stop the recording and thank you once one more time because it was just an amazing, uh, amazing demo. Thank you so much. And I guess we'll see you at the next board meeting. And, yeah. and I'm going to ask you um, uh, to give me a, a no, no, I want to, I want I want you to give me a price on that painting that you just created. So um, a after um, Janet decides if that's what she wants as her, um, whatever but we'll we'll talk later maybe okay okay so thank you all right well appreciate you having me it was fun I appreciate it people so long. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. all bye-bye thank, thank you. you all thank you